Bitcoin and crypto falling right now. Bitcoin down around 15% in the last six days or so. And I want to start the video by saying I'm grateful for it. And it has nothing to do with buying the crypto dip, buying the red, buying the crash. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the continuation of this bull market. And I want to visualize in this video why this is a good thing, why it is normal, why it is healthy, and you know what we can anticipate next in terms of the dip itself. So hit the subscribe, hit the like. Let's just jump into the video. I'm going to start with Bitcoin, have a lot to cover there, but then I want to pivot to altcoins a little bit and talk about what's going on with altcoins at this stage of the cycle. So here's Bitcoin on the daily. We'll, we'll take a look at that in, in just a few minutes, but I really want to start on the weekly zoomed out. I know there seems like there's a lot going on there. It's, it's really nothing crazy. I posted earlier, I said, if Bitcoin were repeating previous cycles at this moment, it would be around $45,000. Crypto has absolutely been spoiled thus far this cycle around. Everything that's been happening so far on these Bitcoin charts and the Bitcoin move, this is happening earlier than it has ever happened. Right now, if, if history was really going to repeat and the cycles did repeat, revolving around the halvings, and here's the Bitcoin halving, Bitcoin would be trading probably around $45,000 or so, somewhere in, in that area right there. And I just want to show you that. And then after we do that, I do want to talk about the dip that is currently happening, what to potentially you know, anticipate next for it, but also just show you why I am so grateful that we're getting some red candles right now because it sounds crazy. I enjoy up only. I enjoy green candles, but it is so necessary if we want to enjoy a long lasting bull market. So let's just talk about what, what I have right now on the screen. As many of you know, I track this, this thing called the bull market doors. And it's very simply a bull market high back here to a bear market low. It's a Fibonacci retracement, which is this tool that you see on the screen. And it's, it's really this channel, this green channel that you see here. Those are the bull market doors. It's a resistance area. When Bitcoin breaks that area every cycle, this kick starts this parabolic phase of the bull. And that also kickstarts altcoin season. We're going to talk about altcoins soon. So this has happened. Point being, though, it happened before the halving. And that is new, right? Every cycle, if we go back to the last cycle, here is November 2020. It happened after the Bitcoin halving. This line that you see on the screen going up and down the screen, that's the Bitcoin halving of 2020. Cycle before that, as many of you know, there's Bitcoin bull market doors being broken again after the halving. And even the cycle before that, all the way back in 2013, there's the Bitcoin bull market doors being broken after the 2012 halving. So it's happened earlier this time around. But I have another piece of data to kind of visualize on this screen using the Fibonacci as well and just really utilizing the 50% ratio, which is right here, right? This 50% line. That's what you see this huge green uh, area, this green channel. It's, it's right here. This 50% line is what I wanted to focus on because if we actually go back on the same Fibonacci, we take our attention away from the bull market doors, which this is kind of new, and we just look at this 50% line we'll kind of see this range between the 50% line and the 618, the bottom of the bull market doors, right? Bitcoin kind of hanging out in that area or at least in that realm prior to the halving each cycle. You can see last cycle right before the halving, it was right below that area. If we go to the cycle before that, all the way back here, you can see right before the halving, Bitcoin was in between the 50% and the 618 right around 700 some dollars. And you can even go back to the cycle before that. Bitcoin didn't even hit the 50% ratio prior to the halving. So my point in saying this is that area, that 50% area ratio area prior to the halving, I think is a fair number to say, you know what? Bitcoin could hang out in that vicinity prior to the halving, but really not any higher. If it's going to repeat previous cycles and look, it went higher. So I'm saying Bitcoin should be maybe around here right now, 45,000, right? And it was actually, and then all of a sudden, boom, explosion. And I think a lot has to do with not only the narrative of the spot ETFs, but the fact that there's actually a supply shock happening right now. So the move that happened is happening earlier and it's spoiling everybody. Bitcoin's still in the 60s after a retracement that's happened already. It's been in the 70s, right? We've broken all-time high already. This is spoiling us. And I think people are forgetting where we are in this cycle. It has not even happened yet, the Bitcoin having. So that's number one. I really want to point that out because it's incredibly important, especially as we're surviving these dips and dips that happen. We shouldn't even be as high as we are. And I shouldn't say we shouldn't be here. We are. It is what it is. But if, if we were really just anticipating another cycle repeat, we'd be hanging out in the 40s right now. 
So that's that. The other thing I want to talk about is historically these dips, right? These dips that we're seeing right now, this is what bull markets are made of. It's very simply what bull markets are made of. And I wanted to show you this on the chart. Here's a bull market back here, 2017. There's the bull market doors for reference to give you an idea. You know, we just broke these pretty recently. Pretty, pretty, you know, a short amount of time after breaking the bull market doors back here in 2017, Bitcoin fell. It plummeted all the way back into those bull market doors. Swing high to that swing low. We're looking at around a 33% dip for Bitcoin. Check that out. Massive dip. People probably thinking, man, that's, that's, that might be it, right? Look at this. Kind of like a double top. Double top. That's it for Bitcoin. We're going down. And then what happened? Boom. Parabolic bull after the 33% dip. And then through that bear market, 32% dip, 36% dip, 40% dip, 29% dip. And as we're, as we're looking at that, just take note you know, of, of kind of the volatility of the dips and how extreme they were. And we can also just take note of where the, the moving averages are, the 50, the 20, because those are important, I think, as we, as we kind of try to anticipate what might happen next for Bitcoin. But that was that cycle in 2017 or so. And then we go to the last cycle, the most previous cycle. Bitcoin not looking as volatile, but pretty big dips as well, right? Shortly af after Bitcoin broke, and we've talked about this in a recent video, shortly after Bitcoin broke the bull market doors, we were getting some retracements. We were getting a cooling down. If you remember, I think it was this video actually from five days ago, I think we were talking about Bitcoin price cooling phase. And we were just talking about how on the daily chart, cooling down is okay. You can see on the momentum oscillator at this, at this time, Bitcoin on the RSI falling, cooling down, out of overbought in this moment. That's what we want to see. At that time, you can see Bitcoin testing the top of those bull market doors and then bouncing to the upside. A lot of kind of support and, and a good indicator at the 20-day moving average, but ultimately it's the range of the 50-day moving average and the 20-day moving average that we're watching for in these environments. And then you can see continuing into this bull market, a 10% dip, some consolidation right there. And then a really big 31% consolidation, looks like a multi-week consolidation probably on this daily chart, cooling down in the RSI. We want to see that, right? So if we go to the cycle now where we are, we just broke, if I can get there, we just broke the bull market doors and we're getting a cooling off on the RSI. We want to see it. Every cycle so far has consisted of these cooling off moments. Bitcoin just taking a chill pill and dipping big time. And that applies to the rest of crypto. So right now for Bitcoin, I'm watching just a very key range. There's no like exact short-term short support that I'm watching. When we get candles like this, it's just everything's falling. I just, I let it do its thing and just see where there's going to be some buying pressure or support. But general range, I'm looking at the 20-day moving average still, right? Which it's fallen below the 20 and the 50. And the 50 is down here around $56,000. And so, so key to this is the fact that we have, if you remember kind of this area that we were watching for Bitcoin to explode through, it has happened. But now we have this throwback area for, for Bitcoin in, in play. And that is the top of the Bitcoin bull market doors around fifty-seven to $58,000 as well. So 56000 58000 And then obviously the 20, Bitcoin has failed to stay above the 20. But it's just this general range that is forming right here. I'll be watching to see what happens there. That doesn't mean Bitcoin can't fall all the way back into maybe just the general Fibonacci range, even this huge, massive rising wedge that Bitcoin broke out of. Remember, target to the upside, $85,000. We could get fake outs along the way, meaning we get the breakout and the throwback right back to the wedge before continuing to the target. Remember, the Bitcoin having hasn't even happened yet. I have to keep saying that. Because as we're talking about this volatility and maybe even huge crashes, huge retracements, maybe Bitcoin just cools down for a month or two. Crypto just like, what happened? Is the bull market over? It's still so early. It's so early. The Bitcoin having is right here. And we know historically when the, the true bull market kicks off is after the Bitcoin having. And this is a weekly chart. So we're talking about months after, months after the Bitcoin having. This has happened early. We've been spoiled. We have to really just not only, I think, be grateful for the dips, but just live with it. It is what it is. This is what crypto is made of. This is absolutely nothing new. And that's all that I know. This is the data. This isn't my opinion. This is just what data tells me. So I'm just sticking to the data. 
because when, when evaluating charts and, and markets, the data is probably the better guide other than opinions and emotions. So that's Bitcoin. That's what I'm watching on Bitcoin. I want to pivot over to uh, altcoins and talk about it. I actually have four altcoins up on the screen that I want to discuss. But in regards to altcoins, this will probably apply to most charts, especially uh, the ones that have moved just crazy lately, like Solana, for instance. But this is ADA, a really good example, kind of applying to the, in the same manner that I applied the Bitcoin data. This time, last cycle, right? meaning before the Bitcoin halving, here's Bitcoin halving back here. ADA was like right around here, around four or five cents. It hadn't even touched or broken this lower high of the bear market, right? So this cycle around, ADA should probably be more around here. We're looking at around the 30 cent range because we have these lower highs back here. Like right here, a lower high around 47 cents or so in the bear market, ADA didn't even break that area at this moment in the last bear market. But ADA is even above that area now. So I know people are very unhappy with the performance of ADA, but I'm just telling you right now, and this applies to probably a lot of altcoins, it could be way worse if it was actually repeating what it did last cycle. So consolidation right now in the altcoin charts, but I want to just open this up just to give you an idea. Top left is Polkadot. Uh, top right is, is Chainlink. Bottom left is Cardano. Bottom right is Matic. It's very simple, everybody. We just dissected really the true roadmap of crypto in these cycles. That is the Bitcoin chart. We see where we are. We see the move that's happening right now. It's earlier. These are altcoins. They're, they're making their way out of the bear markets, as you can see, very similar structures actually even, making their way out of the bear markets and just forming new structure and, and kind of building up that momentum. And along the way, along that story, there's going to be retracements. For something like, um, you know, we'll just look at Polkadot in the, in the top left. It's very simple as we evaluate these charts. And, and Polkadot, I don't know why these other charts, I, I don't have the moving averages set up right, but Polkadot does. The 20-week moving average is all the way down there around $7.50 or so, $7.45. The 50-week moving average around $5.97. Let's just call it $6.00. These are just areas where on weekly charts, we should just be able to anticipate potential retracements. That doesn't mean that it might not, and maybe it'll bounce sooner than that, right? But these are just higher lows pivoting out of a bear market. There are outliers. Solana absolutely just has been just going crazy, almost breaking all-time highs, right? And that's just a, an added benefit to the altcoin bull run and in just an added point to the whole thing that I'm trying to say, this entire altcoin market and Bitcoin market right now is moving sooner in a more bullish manner than previous cycles. So even what you see here on these altcoin charts, it's very normal and it doesn't seem like it. People want the people want the thousand percent gains across the board already. It's not even Bitcoin having yet. And I don't I don't know where they're getting that data that that that, that should be happening right now. But it really just not, it's not the case. So I think we've been spoiled. These, these altcoin charts are just setting up a foundation, I think, for a parabolic move. Historically, if we look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, just to give you an idea, historically, altcoin season, the gains, those crazy gains, altcoins making really nice runs. It doesn't happen until after the Bitcoin halving. So here are the Bitcoin halvings, the white lines. Here's what altcoin season looks like. This is Bitcoin dominance falling during altcoin season. Post having in 2016. Post having in 2020. Altcoin season in that green rectangle. That's what altcoin season looks like. Look where we are, everybody. It's not even Bitcoin having yet. Altcoin season I've had as kind of all the way over here. All the way over here. And people are, are, are getting frustrated with altcoins and getting frustrated with you know, with their certain altcoin that they're holding because they're not seeing these crazy gains. Meanwhile, out of the bear market, there's hundreds of percent gains out of the bear market that people are not happy with at this point. Dissect the data. Just look at the data and see where we are on the roadmap of, of cycles. And this is where we are. We're pre-having and we've been spoiled thus far. So the dips, whether it's post, if, whether it's pre-having or post-having, even in altcoin season, these dips that are happening right now, and here it is on Bitcoin, like a you know, 15% dip or so, 
maybe even a little bit more since I started the video. We're looking at around 15% dip. They're so normal. They're necessary. We have to live with them. I think they're bullish. At the end of the day, nobody knows what's going to happen. And, and the, we always have to watch support, where support going to be. In my extreme worst case scenarios, it's always a piece of my kind of approach to these markets. Many of you hear me say, expect nothing, anticipate everything. Over all my years doing these crypto videos, in the back of my mind, I'm always anticipating the worst where history doesn't repeat itself, support doesn't hold, and we just absolutely crash like never before. That's always on my mind. And it's always just something I'm just like, you know what? I'm ready for it if it happens. But meanwhile, I'm, I'm tracking the consistent data and it is right there screaming at us in the face. So these are my thoughts on the markets right now in the crash. It wasn't really a, short, uh, a shorter term zoomed in analysis, but really painting the macro story. Because if you're zoomed in, it's going to look terrible. But if you're zoomed out, it's going to look absolutely normal. Look at this. Can't even notice the dip that's happening right now when you zoom out because it happens like every other week or month. So these are my thoughts on the markets today. Hit the subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I'm going to be covering these markets through, the, through, through this next bull cycle. A lot going on in terms of Bitcoin, altcoins, crypto news. So turn notifications on. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.